851, turn right, heading 180. Hello everyone, welcome to DJ's Aviation. In today's video, I'll be looking into the question, is the A380 a failure? With facts, stats, predictions and more, I'll hopefully give you some understanding on the aircraft to form an overall opinion. Of course, at the end of the video, I'll also give my views on it. In this video, I'll be analysing the amount of orders, what its purpose is, the timing, capacity and so on. We'll begin with the Airbus A380 itself, a more general look at it. The A380 is the largest passenger plane in the world right now and holds four engines. The distinct difference between the 747 and the A380 is that the Airbus A380 features the extended top deck which runs the entire length of the plane. The A380 also features a rounder nose and ridiculously large tail. The Airbus A380 was introduced with Singapore Airlines more than a decade ago in 2007 and since then has been heavily debated if it has been a failure, success or just simply another airplane. With the double-decker aspect, the aircraft has 550 square metres or 5,920 square feet of usable floor space, which has been calculated to be around 40% larger than the 747-8. Typically, the aircraft will provide seating for 525 people in a three-class configuration, or if an airline was to create an all-economy cabin, there would be 853 seats. It is worth noting no airline has this configuration, and I actually somewhat doubt if any airline will be attempting this configuration in the near future. The Airbus A380 can fly for 8,500 nautical miles, or 15,700 kilometers, which is extremely respectable for its gigantic nature. Its cruising speed is at around 900 kilometers an hour, or 560 miles per hour, and this is achieved at its cruising altitude. In terms of determining if it's a failure, we should take a look at the initial costs that went into developing the new lightweight materials that made the plane what it is today, and of course answer that question about breaking even in terms of development costs. The Airbus A380 was no doubt a huge success for Airbus in terms of engineering and design. There's no other fully double-decker aircraft currently flying passengers around the world. This is a huge plus for Airbus. So although Airbus spent a large sum of money researching and developing new materials, even if the A380 hadn't sold well, these parts that they spent the time researching are now available for use in future generations of aircraft, whether that be potentially the A380+, Plus, A380neo if we ever see one, future A380 versions, or simply, let's just say, the A350. So it depends on how you look at things, but not all of the costs of developing these materials should be attached to the A380 program. On the same topic of materials, it's actually important to realise that the A380 production also meant hundreds of people received a substantial source of employment across Europe. Next, it's time to look at what the A380 offers in terms of cabin products. As I've mentioned, the Airbus A380 has 40% more floor space than the 747-8, and airlines that operate the A380 use this in very different ways. For example, airlines that promote a sense of luxury, like Emirates, Etihad, or Qatar, use this extra space to release incredibly beautiful and spacious first-class suites. Etihad Airways have their residence, which is an apartment-like space, of course, the price tag attached with this sort of seat is in my eyes simply ridiculous, but nevertheless, if I had the money, I'd probably try it out and would love it. Singapore Airlines are also joining in on the action with their own suite. While again, the aircraft may not have been a huge commercial success, it has enabled airlines to continue to reinvent cabins and make them even more luxurious than anyone could have imagined. In fact, similar to the materials on the aircraft, the cabins can also be transferred to other aircraft. Of course, there wouldn't be as many seats, but for sure, airlines like Emirates are already using these first-class suites that we have seen on the Airbus A380 on the likes of the 777, which further enhances passenger comfort. In turn though, Emirates offering these first-class suites, which are like a room and multiple other airlines following, 
it means airlines with the Airbus A380 appeal that little bit more highly than let's say an airline which is not offering this first class suite. Of course, this only relates with people who want to travel in luxury and prefer traveling first class. Next, let's take a look at capacity. The A380s can carry over 500 passengers to their destinations, and this then therefore can pose some problems to airlines as they need to reduce their ticket prices to sell seats. We as the passengers on the flight benefit from flying on a half-empty plane. What's better than having an entire row to yourself, or being spread out on the aircraft from other people, moving from seat to seat, and so on. I've experienced it and it was great. But airlines may be in turn losing money from this. A380's operating costs are low when it's a fully loaded airplane, in other words, a full payload, and airlines have to price their tickets low to sell these seats. So this is a big dilemma for operating airlines. It also possibly turns off future operators and therefore making it not the commercial success Airbus had hoped. Now it's time for timing. The A380 was first brought up in the 1990s and would compete with the 747-400 as there was simply nothing else rivaling the mighty 747. McDonnell Douglas never released their MD-12 either. Airbus did launch their A340 with long range, but with half of the A380's capacity. Boeing then had its 777-200. It was pretty much a game of tic-tac-toe between the airline manufacturers. By the time the mighty A380 was rolled out and operating with a few airlines, the 787 and A350 entered the scene with often operating similar ranges to the Airbus A380 with a lower capacity and, finally, lower operating costs. This ties in nicely with my point about the capacity. It meant airlines wouldn't have to sell as many seats as that on the A380, and airlines often saw this as a huge risk if they were going to purchase the A380. They needed it to be full, and in today's market they just weren't sure if that was going to happen. Airlines began to see the promise with the 787 and A350, and then moved for these aircraft. In the future, there will be the 777X, which has an even longer range and lower operating costs. Airlines like Singapore Airlines and Emirates, two operators of the current A380, have in fact ordered the 777X for their future growth. With the A380 Plus's future still up in the air, who knows if the A380 family will attract more or new orders in the future. I know there may be failures, but there are in fact positives. Passengers love the A380, at least most. This is especially so in business and first class. So many passengers, as we've touched on, prefer to fly on the A380 because of these products on offer, and it can determine whether Emirates or Singapore Airlines pocket another $10,000, for example, through selling this seat. While you cannot determine this as being a fail, it's actually worth noting that Airbus salespeople, and of course Airbus in a more general aspect, did believe that the A380 would gain more sales than it has now, a potentially disappointing result for the European manufacturer. While the parts can now be used on other aircraft and the cabin product is of course nice as we've touched on, the failure to gain more orders could in fact be an overriding factor within Airbus. Now I want to put forward some figures to you. They are in relation to the 747, A380 and 787 and their amount of orders. The figures will just hopefully show you where the demand is headed nowadays and where airlines would prefer to put their money. The Airbus A380 entered servers in 2007. As of today, it has been ordered around 300 times and that's delivered and undelivered. Airbus has cut its production drastically. After 10 years, the Boeing 747 had been ordered 301 times. But let's look at the very attractive 787 and A350s. The Boeing 787 entered service in 2011. 1,365 of them have been ordered. The Airbus A350 entered service in 2015 and has 832 orders. The contrast is honestly incredible and shows you where the demand has gone. The 777X is yet to enter service and has 300 orders, almost as many as the A380 which has been out for more than a decade. All in all, the question is very difficult to answer, and personally, I believe the A380 was a commercial failure due to its amount of orders. 
Yes, 300 can be deemed as a lot, but for Airbus expectations, it wasn't positive. And finally, it's actually worth mentioning that Airbus had to heavily rely on Emirates to keep the program alive, and then they secured the extra orders earlier in the year. But as a plane itself, to me, it's been a success. I've had the pleasure of flying on the A380, and it was an absolute dream. It's truly amazing how planes that big can get in the sky, and of course, the potential cabin layouts and seat designs it can offer to airlines really do make it a huge success for passengers. If you're interested in me exploring if more aircraft were failures in the future, let me know in the comment section below. Now I'd like to ask you, do you believe the Airbus A380 was a failure, success, maybe a commercial failure, how I mentioned? Just let me know as well in the comment section below as I'd be really interested to see what you have to say. As always, if you're new to the channel, the subscribe button is always there. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like as well. I'd very much appreciate that. I'd now like to take the time to thank you very much for watching this video of mine, and I look forward to you all joining me in the next installment of DJ's Aviation.